Nowadays, when people think of saints, they usually picture someone very kind of serious and studious and scholarly and frankly a little bit boring. But that wasn't always the case. You see, in ancient Ireland, there were certain duties that were expected of saints to perform. And one of those duties, perhaps one of the most important, was dealing with local monsters. If there was a monster in the locality and there was a saint in the neighbourhood, it was very much expected that the saint would go out and take care of that monster. And most of the monsters in Irish folklore would have been gigantic worms. Pretty much every county has its own story of huge, gigantic worms that terrorised the people. In fact, giant worms were so frequently the monsters in Irish folklore that one of the Irish words for monster, Ulfeisht, literally translates as giant worm. Now I have an idea of what you're thinking. Hang on a moment. If saints were supposed to fight monsters, and most of the monsters were giant worms. Does that mean the whole thing about St. Patrick chasing the snakes out of Ireland? Does that mean that's not a metaphor for pagans and he was actually just beating up giant worms with a stick? And the answer is probably. The whole thing about the snakes is probably based on a poor translation job that people just took and ran with. A speaking of saints and running, Running is exactly what St. Cullum Kill did after he lost a copyright dispute with St. Finian. That's not a joke, look it up, that's actually what happened. And he ran to Scotland. He founded a monastery on the island of Iona off the coast of Scotland and he would often journey back and forth between his monastery on Iona and the mainland of Scotland. And it was during one of those trips to the mainland that St. Cullum Kill became involved in the very first sighting of the Loch Ness Monster. You see, St. Cullum Kill and some of his followers from the monastery, they had just come to the River Ness and they were looking for a good place to cross. And they were walking up and down the bank of the river when they came across this terrible commotion by the riverbank. See, a man had been swimming in the river and he'd been bitten. He'd had a huge bite taken out of him by some huge, terrible beast that lived in the water. And some people had gotten into a boat and fished him out, but they were too late. He died of his wounds. Now, St. Columkill, he wasn't bothered by this at all. No matter how much people cautioned him, he said, no, it's grand. I'm going to cross the river anyway. So he says to one of his followers, do me a favour, swim across the river there, get that boat that's tied up on the opposite bank and row it back here to take us across. So his follower, he stripped down completely, he jumped in the water, trusting in his master's word that he would be fine. And as he swam across, the beast at the bottom of the river. It could hear the splashing as he swam. It could feel the ripples in the water as he swam. And the beast wasn't satisfied with what it had eaten earlier that day. He'd only taken a single bite out of that fellow who died. And it began to lick its chop. And it emerged from the riverbed and started swimming upward. And soon this terrible coiling neck with a head like a horse's but many times larger on the end of it leered down at the follower of St. Columkill as he panicked in the water. And Columkill himself, he shouted, you will not touch that man beast. You will not lay tooth to him. And the beast, the great monster of the luck, it snorted and it roared as if in derision. And so St. Columkill, he took his crozier, 
he pulled it back behind his shoulder and he cast it at the beast, throwing it with all his might. And the crozier, it struck the beast across the nose and it burned with all the fury of the saints and all the fury of God himself. And at this, the beast let out a terrible pained cry. It fled from the sight, fleeing before the horror it felt at the pain inflicted on it by Cullumkill. And it fled into the loch that the river flowed into. It fled into Loch Ness. And there it has remained ever since. And Cullumkill is follower. He finished his swim across the river. He got the boat, he rowed it back across. And Cullum Kill and the rest of his men, they entered the boat and they continued on their journey. 